lack of money is not an obstacle lack of ideas are so today we're getting into 10 more side hustles you can start today to make some money in 2020. let's get into the video Hey, hi, hello. If you're new to my channel, my name is Kat Bio, and I'm not gonna tell you why you should subscribe to this channel because I'm hoping by the end of this video, you will already know why. So for my subscribers who have been reaching out to me saying that they're applying for these work at home positions and they're not getting a call back, today we're going into side hustles that you can be in control of. So you're not waiting for an employer to call you back and employers aren't gonna be affecting your money. So today we're going into side hustles. These are not gonna be jobs where you can call up somebody and apply. This is gonna be completely, you are in control of your destiny, you're controlling of your pockets, your control of your money. So anybody can start this around the world, no matter what. These are new things in 2020 that no one's talking about. I at least I haven't heard anyone talking about. We're just gonna get right into it. So my first one is to become a service broker. So essentially, if you understand the idea of a broker, a broker is kind of like the middleman in between clients and their agents. So as a service broker, what you're gonna be doing is gonna be facilitating services coming over to other people's houses that it's not your service so a really good example is like a plumbing service so your website is Omaha plumbing so when you have your clients reach out to you saying they need some plumbing what you will do is you will contact an actual local plumber in your area send that person over to their house and you collect the money essentially so they pay you a hundred dollars you pay Bob the plumber $80 and you make $20. So there are a lot of companies that do this already. It's not reinventing the wheel, but this is something a lot of people don't think about. You don't need to necessarily need to be providing a service if you become a broker. Obviously, you're gonna wanna do your homework and screen these plumbers. You don't wanna be bringing really horrible people to people's houses and they screw up their plumbing system or whatever, but you can do this with pretty much any of the trades, electricians, plumbers, construction, roofing, any of these jobs are things you can become a service broker and just be the middleman between your in buyer and your service worker. This is actually something I do with freelancing and the freelancing business. So I do video editing and when I have too many clients and my workload is too crazy, I just outsource it to another freelancer and just collect a little fee. So this is the service broker is just such a scalable business. You can do this with skills. You can do this with online products. You can do this with freelancing. There's just so many options and the sky is the limit. It really is. Okay, my second side hustle you can do without an employer, you just do it yourself, is becoming a leads broker. So once again, we're staying in the broker sphere. So I will tell you, I paid $249 for this online course that I'm about to tell you for free and I'm about to summarize this entire six week course in less than a minute. So if you appreciate that, give this video a thumbs up and let me know down below by leaving a comment. So essentially as a lead broker, what people are doing is, let's use our plumbing example again. You create a website, Omaha Plumbing. Omaha is a city in Nebraska. When leads come into your website that they are inquiring about information about this service, you now sell those leads off to plumbing companies that need those leads. So businesses always need leads to make more business, right? They always need customers and they need leads. So eventually, sometimes leads dry up and they don't have anyone to call about plumbing. They can't just start calling and knocking on doors. I guess you could, but nobody wants to do that. So when you have an active lead, somebody saying that they're interested in plumbing services, then that's somebody who is most likely going to buy a plumbing service in the near future. So what you do is you sell these leads off to businesses to be able to contact them. And since it is in the same sphere of plumbing, they're gonna be expecting this call because they went through your landing page, they went through your opt-in, they put in their information, their phone number, and they talked about their issue, and then you sell those leads off to other people. So what this course essentially tells people to do is you contact these businesses and you have like a monthly fee with them at a monthly rate. So let's just say you charge them 300 bucks a month to take all the plumbing leads in your area. So what people do is they scale this business up, but they 
do a bunch of different websites, many different industries, you know, interior design, plumbing, construction, roofing. Like I said, it can be any skilled work and it can be any service in general. It can be photography, it can be wedding, videography, literally anything. And when those leads come in, you just sell them off. So once again, you don't have any inventory. You don't have any employees. Your startup costs are very minimal. So just to really hit this, make sure this is hitting home. If I have a plumbing business and I run out of leads, I don't have anybody to call, but this other website, Omaha, plumbing.com has plumbing leads coming in every day, 10 leads a day. You can sell those 10 leads to me where I can now call those leads and follow up and hopefully close a few of those sales. Okay, the third one is gonna be sell your friend's crap broker. This is also a broker because what I'm trying to teach you is that you can be the middleman to a lot of different industries. So my friends, grandparents passed away and they had this house. They had this house just full of stuff, just full of stuff and they were like I don't want anything I'm just gonna throw it all out and I was just like oh my god sis like do you know how much money you could be making to just doing like an estate sale or putting this on Craigslist listing it on Facebook marketplace and she's like I don't care I don't want to deal with it I don't have the time I just want to get pay a company to get rid of everything and be done with it I was like, well shoot, can I do it? So essentially what I proposed to my friend is I will organize it all, I will take the pictures, I will meet with the customers to sell the stuff, I will literally do everything and all the money we get, I'll just take a percentage of that, which was 20%, which is just my time of doing everything. So you can also do this. So there is a lot of people in similar situations where they move, they divorce, a parent died or a grandparent, and they have all this stuff they need to get rid of and nobody wants to deal with it. So you can step in, you just, just swoop in there and you can offer your services as somebody who will sell all of their stuff for them and just take a percentage of it. I won't say how much we actually sold everything for, but there were three grandfather clocks that she was just gonna toss at a landfill like, Sis, this is money, this is money. Okay, my first one is to start a property management company. This is something that can turn into a full-time business. So there is all the rage right now that millennials and people and young people and older people all are trying to invest in real estate. Real estate is one of the fastest ways you can grow your equity and have generational wealth in your family. However, there are a lot of people that don't know what they're doing. They're investors, they took on too much that they can chew. They want to switch property management companies because they suck. But essentially what you can do is be the mediator between your investors and the houses. How property management works for investors is usually you have a set rate that people rent your house for like, let's just say $2,000. You just ask for 10% of that a month to manage everything. So $200 a month, you will get to be able to manage the property. So when the toilet breaks, you call the plumber. When there's a leak, you call another sub. When the washer doesn't work anymore, you go to Sears and you buy a washer and you have somebody put it in there. And by the way, when I say buy it, this is gonna be the investor's money. You're not gonna be putting out money. You're just gonna be managing everything. So nothing's gonna be coming out of your pocket. You're gonna get $200 every month for managing it. And then when stuff happens, you organize it. However, if you've ever rented an apartment, there can be months and months and months before nothing ever happens. So you might not have to do anything for like six months and then all of a sudden you have a couple things you need to do and that's it. So if you can get 10 different investors managing 10 different houses, this is $2,000 for you that you might not be doing something every single day. So this is something that's really, really cool and interesting if you're in an area where there's just a lot of demand for properties and stuff like that and then people are investing like crazy, like in California. So yeah, you can become a property manager. My fifth one is becoming a dating consultant. So what you'd be doing as a dating consultant is to be helping people, men, look better on dating apps. Tinder, Bumble, and seeking arrangements because men, y'all need some help. Sometimes, you know, as, as a dating consultant, you can help these men just look better on social media and portray the person they want to portray. Cause I look at some of these profiles and it's like, what the actual F were you thinking when you created this thing? Like this consultant will help you with your, your pickup lines and what to say to women and advice to not send strangers your genitalia. Like don't do that. 
please. I'm just so triggered right now. <laughs> but essentially as a dating consultant, you'd be giving advice on the overall aesthetics of their social media and then also advice on how to interact with women, how to pick up on cues between texts and then also social cues and body language once they're actually on the date itself. This can be just a lot of fun. And there's a few people that have made millions of dollars by advising other people on how to date better. My sixth one is to become a meal preparer. Where are my chefs at? Because I have a lot of people that are in the creative sphere and asking what's for them. So I think this would be a really great option for anybody who likes to cook. Have you heard of Purple Carrot? Have you heard of Fresh? Have you heard of Green Chef? Where these are on-demand meal packages that come every month with all the ingredients, the recipes and everything, and all you have to do is cook them. They do that because people nowadays, they don't have time to go to the grocery store, they don't wanna look up recipes, they just wanna have it to them and cook it. Can you believe people still don't even wanna cook it? But anyways, so essentially what you can do is you can meal prep for people, B busy people that just need their lunch for the entire week meal prep for them. There's a woman on on YouTube called Goodful and she gets paid to prepare meals for people just like this meal prep for a huge family every single month. And it's something that you can really consider doing if you like to cook and your food is delicious. My seventh thing is to have an event venue that you rent out for events and things like that. So do I have any farmers out there? Anybody with land, vacant land? So I got this idea from some of my distant relatives that will not let go of this vacant land. No one is living on it. Nobody wants to live on it because it's in um, F nowhere. And the ant that owns it will not let any of the members sell any of their pieces. But anyways, that's a little TMI of my family drama, but I had this idea, well, why don't we build a barn on it and rent it out to rustic weddings and parties, graduation parties and birthday parties, bachelor parties, children's parties, all of this stuff, because we all know weddings are a cash cow. And this is perfect for children's party because you know they're not gonna mess up the venue. They're not gonna tear it up to pieces because it's just a barn and some dirt. It's perfect for children's parties. But anyways, my point is if you have some land or you're a farmer or you have like a huge yard and you want to rent out your space for an event or a party, this could be a great land and it's just not being used right now currently. My eighth side hustle you can do is become a process server. So this actually is something that you would apply and work for in your county or your city. So sorry, this is the only one though. So you know the famous line in the movies like, you've been served. So the person that does that is a process server. They get paid about 20 to $25 an hour depending on where you are in the country and your experience. But honestly, your job as a process server would be to track down these people to serve them. Essentially, they say you're not actually served until you are served, officially like served. So you have to track them down and do it. In a lot of states like in Nebraska, a lot of times it's appointed to a sheriff, but there are many times that they need a process server to do this job. For example, as a process server, you might be delivering warrants, subpoenas, divorce papers, and anything else in between. Do look at the specific requirements state by state to see if you will need any certifications, but from what I've seen, you really don't. So this might not be as exciting as what it is portrayed in movies, but if you are an adventure seeker where you might have to be tracking down criminals, or just people that want to divorce their exes, then this could be a really exciting position for you. My next one is becoming a Pinterest virtual assistant or executive assistant. So I'm sure you've heard of Pinterest before. It's a really great place to find DIYs, crafts, inspiration on clothing, vacations, just nuggets here and there, recipes, etc. But did you actually know that there's lots of business owners and bloggers that need Pinterest virtual assistants? It's in high demand actually. And since it's such a new position and a new career field, people just don't know how to do it and they just they just don't know how to do it. This probably could be one of the best side hustles for 2020 just because it is such a new position and there is just so much demand and anybody can learn it. On average, you can charge about $500 per client. And since you are a 1099 employee, you can have as many clients as you want. 
Essentially what you'd be doing for the client is creating pins. If you don't know what Pinterest is, a pin is a pretty much a snapshot of what you're gonna see once you click into the pin itself. Just imagine like a little short graphic design where you can just see what it's about and then you click into it. You will also be optimizing images doing keyword research. So if you have a marketing background, even better and developing a pinning schedule. Okay, my next way is to flip furniture. I don't know if I've ever talked about this. This honestly is not something super new. Actually, it's not new at all, but there is so much money in home decor, in furniture. People are constantly changing their furniture, updating their houses. They wanna be in pretty homes and people just love home decor. So what you're gonna do is you go to a thrift store and you pick out a piece that's 90% off retail value. We're talking like five to 10 bucks. Then you go buy some sandpaper and some paint and you resell it for a hundred plus dollars, pocketing the difference. If you are like broke, broke, you can also just drive around your neighborhood and find people that leave abandoned unwanted furniture on the curb and you can pick that up and then revitalize it with sandpaper and paint. If you do this, just make sure it is very clear that it is abandoned and unwanted. You do not wanna get picked up for stealing someone's furniture. Also, there is a section on Craigslist called free. You can also use that to find a really nice find. There's another group on Facebook called Upcycle. They also have free stuff that you trade with other people that you can use for your own business. My ninth way is to rent out your extra space for storage. We're not talking about Airbnb yet. We're not talking about roommates. So if you're, if you're somebody who is like, I have this extra space, but I don't wanna deal with roommates. I don't wanna be hosting people. I don't want people in my face asking me questions about how the toaster works, or you don't want like the coronavirus from strangers coming into your house. Okay, that was a bad joke. That was a really bad joke. But you don't want a roommate, you don't want Airbnb because let's be real, they can kind of suck sometimes. This is an option for you to rent out your space as storage. So I actually did this when I was in Madrid. So in Madrid, the schedule is all the expats come and then over the summer, there's about three months that there's no work so everybody leaves. It's really hot and miserable so people leave and they're in between apartments and they have like a couple suitcases they wanna leave behind because they're gonna be traveling or visiting family and they really don't need to take it with them. So I had, my room, just piles of suitcases that I charged $20 a suitcase for the entire summer. So it added up really, really quickly and it was just fun money for me. This was just a, a room in my apartment that I had and I just put a bunch of these suitcases in there for storage. So obviously like this isn't gonna work for you if people wanna you put their couch in there, but sometimes people just wanna put some furniture and a TV and you can charge people per article. If you don't want things coming into your house, you can also do this in a garage where you're not using it or a shed or something like this. Just just really you can find the space or make the space in your yard and let people know that you can store their stuff. You would be surprised how many people need stuff to store after a divorce, after their kids graduate and move out, in between apartments, looking for a house, etc. You would be shocked. And most people will even haul it themselves. Okay, my last and 10th one is to become a referee. I want you to think of all the school games, the elementary schools, the associations, the clubs, the colleges that have basketball games, football games, any other sport you can think of. I am particularly gonna be talking about basketball today though. So all of these games that are going on all over your city usually need referees for about an hour and they pay you about $50 a game. So college may be out of your league to be a referee, but you don't have to be this crazy professional referee to referee children's basketball. So all of these games that are going on all over your city usually need referees for about an hour and they pay you about $50 a game. So if you have a weekend free and you do four games, that's an easy $200 for fun in your free time. So some places, not all places, are do require you to take some workshops and have a certain amount of hours accumulated before you can work for certain companies. However, this is also just in your free time when you wanna do it. Actually, one of my best friends did this on the weekends in his free time, and he had so much fun just watching kids run into each other and falling over each other and just running everywhere with no rhyme or reason because they're little kids and it's just fun to watch. You don't need to be like this expert. 
All right, so those are my 10 side hustles that you can check out today for 2020. Do check out my video that I made in 2018 about a huge side hustling list that most people weren't talking about at that point in time. That video you can find here. But until next time, like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.